Welcome to Q&A with, with TNA. <laughs> hey Prana Boosters, welcome to the Prana Boost Show. I am Tina Louise Belodi. And I am Ellen Belodi. We waited till the night before <laughs> to do our homework. We actually committed to um, launching a podcast episode every Thursday. And we are recording this episode Wednesday at 11.25 p.m. Hey, at we, night. We still have 35 minutes. Yes. We are on schedule and we are staying in integrity with uh, what we promised ourselves and our audience. But um, the reason that we were so like distracted and crazy busy this week is that I just published my very first children's book. Yay. Yay. Well, we. It was really a family project. We, we, yes. Yes. So uh, my first book is on... Amazon as a paperback and a Kindle, and it's called Misalignment, the Emotion Fairy. So I'm very excited about that. So if someone wants to find the link, what would be the best way to just... Just go to Amazon.com and type in Miss, like Ms, like M-S, um, Alignment, A-L-I-G-N-M-E-N-T, Misalignment, and she will come up, or my name, Tina Louise Belodi, should bring it up. Cool. And um, it's really cool. You can take a look and see they have a sample, so you can kind of get an idea. It's um, pretty awesome. It's an awesome story. We actually illustrated it all ourselves, so it's been illustrated by um, our girls and myself and Alan. Put a lot of love into that. Yeah. It took approximately about a year to illustrate it, but in between, we wanted to tell everyone we got a puppy, right. <laughs> which delayed us like four months with a new, brand new puppy. Well... well like with anything, it was just a big learning curve. It was a big learning curve, yes. It hurt my brain many days. We just had no idea what we were doing, and it was a, it was amazing, though. I mean, it's amazing to see. I w if you go to my Instagram, at PranaBoost, um, you can see on our account, I'm actually going to upload a video, but we actually showed some, and I'll show this on uh, Miss Alignment has our own Instagram account, too. Um, I'll actually so show some of the behind the scenes, but we've actually had storyboards up that our daughter Isabella drew for us, last year um, in our kitchen for like almost a year. We've had storyboards on the wall. So right. it's really just amazing though to like have an idea in your head and, and then be holding the book, holding the creation. It's pretty overwhelming. So um, we wanted to quit like a hundred times and just say forget it and why are we doing it? But I'm really glad we didn't. So anyways, we just wanted to tell you about that. So that's kind of why we waited to the last second to record the podcast. Right. And now you're officially a kid's book author. Yes. Yeah. Which was not intended. It and I'm sure like, you'll write. I'll, sh I'll write more books. Too. Yes, I already have uh, two more books in the works. Um, and this is just the start. Awesome. So today's topic is a very um, controversial topic, actually. Um, it's called Five Ways Screens and Technology Actually Bring Our Family Closer Together. Ooh. So this is a big topic because... Everywhere that I see, like press wise, and talk to people, and with parents and families, they really have a lot of negative things to say about um, families and kids and technology and yeah, ki same kids here. that are every, growing. Every podcast or YouTube video I watch is all about complaining how bad the screens are and yeah. you know limiting time is important and all of that. So I only I have only heard one direction. Yeah, me too. So I thought this was really important. And I actually wrote an article about this um, a few years back even. But we wanted to kind of focus on the positive side of it of technology. And you know, for us, I use my phone all day long. Absolutely. I don't know how I lived without it. I don't know how anyone well, let's, currently would live without let's, it. Let's let's start with stating the obvious. The obvious is, listen, we all know that technology is not going anywhere. And it's going to be, you know, around what thousands of years. It's it's that's going to be the new way of doing things, and it's really important to kind of be friends with it and you know treat it mindfully, like you do anything else in life. Right. So let's just give a little background for us. Um, so our girls are twelve and fourteen, and you know they each have uh, their own devices. Everybody has um, their own iPad. Everybody has an iPhone. Our oldest daughter got her iPhone at nine. And Gabby got her iPhone just recently, actually. I think at like 12 or something. She um, waited a while. Yeah, she just didn't want it. But we knew that Bella could have it and we wanted her to have it. And it was, you know, it was a really interesting experience. It was amazing how much she grew and how much she learned from having it. But 
we do understand that there's two sides to this topic, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit. But um, we just wanted to start off by saying that you know technology for us was a very natural um, progression because we together created um, video games and mobile games for like 18 years. Right. So everything we did was technology and. Like our business was, you know, your greatest passion. Yeah, it was and a big it, part of our lives. Yeah, it was everything. And it allowed us to be entrepreneurs and be home with our kids since the day they were born. So, I mean, it was amazing to have both of us in the house and um, grow up around electronics. And, you know, we did find a way to, you know, have this dream and have this vision and manifest this for our family. And technology has been a huge part of that. Yeah. Do you remember years ago, like, let's just tell them how far back we go. So Alan and I have been together this year, 25 years. And when we met in college, like email and the internet was just starting to be just a thing. Invented. It was literally just invented. So, you know, we kind of have, started, remember dial up and yeah. AOL, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that was so cool. We actually had a client. We actually did games for AOL mm -hmm. um, back in the day, but we always used it and what did we have before Skype? Remember, we used to talk when you had a job. ICQ. For, yeah. Alan had a job for just like three months before we were like full-time entrepreneurs. And we would even talk on, yeah, it was called ICQ. It was like a text, you know, back and forth. So we loved it because it helped us stay connected. I mean, it was just amazing. To be honest with you, I, I don't know how anybody would really live without it. So we just want to like talk about the other side of it because I think if you Google, you're going to find a lot of negative information. So we want to just be kind of a voice for the other side of it um, and tell, you know, our, our side of the story about it. Just like any situation, any anything we've had to learn that's new or how to integrate it into our lives, we needed to learn how to become mindful of our well-being, but not vilify this thing called technology. Like we've embraced every level of it. Uh, I think you were the first one to get an iPhone. Yeah. And I, he, you had it for like a year without me. And because I never had it, and it was just so new too, I didn't know what I was missing. So I was just like, oh, I'm like, I don't need an iPhone. Like that's, you just can have an iPhone. But right. I didn't really know what I was missing. And you're like, oh, you gotta get one. And I'm like, eh, I don't really need it. I was excited because I was making games at that time, so. Yeah, now it's crazy. You know, I mean, I, I, I use my phone all day long. I mean, I use it for work. I use it for personal. I have, we'll talk about later, like how we actually use it and integrate it into our life. But I use it all day long. I need it for everything. I bring it everywhere. I always have it on me. You and everyone else. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know anyone who doesn't. So, I mean, you see it in, in their people's back pockets. You see it in their hands. You see it like we're just became a mobile society, you know, and I think there are, of course, some downsides and just like people, you know, are not mindful with anything. You can be um, not mindful in the kitchen. You can be not mindful with a cup of hot tea. Right. I mean, anything you, you touch mm -hmm. could turn into one or the other. Were you saying tea because I'm drinking tea? Maybe. Yeah. Right. You have to be mindful in every in every scenario. So in our family, we just decided to embrace it and, you know, honestly, inspire our kids you know our girls to use it in a mindful way and and they always have i mean they're very respectful of it and you know everybody takes breaks and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit but um basically families that i work with and and people that i know the discussions are always very negative everyone is very scared and worried about the impact of this technology on relationships um they worry you know about their their family members and they think everybody's addicted right but well, but also because they're focusing on it, that it probably, you know, amplifies their experience of it. Right. So what you focus on expands and what you believe is what you create. So, you know, in our house, we really don't think like that. And and there's been times, though, where I'm told the girls like, hey, let's, you know, let's check in. Like, let's have a break. Like, let's go play outside. Let's they're always up to like go to the park or ride their bikes or go outside or do stuff. And the one thing that I have discussed with other parents and clients is that they say that kids these days, they can't have a conversation. You know, I know in our situation, that's just beyond untrue. Like our kids can have a conversation for a long time without right. being on a device or being on their phone. Well, again, I think it comes down to awareness, right? And awareness, just... connection, trust. I mean, if you are the authoritarian and you're the boss and you're in charge and you're regulating somebody, you're going to actually have, you're going to cause some problems there because you're not really working together on the same team. So they're going to want what they can't have. They're going to, you know, I mean, if they, if kids feel limited, they're going to, you know, kind of rebel. Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know what I would do. Like I, 
you know, the girls actually in the past have told me like, um, mom, you need to put your phone down or let's right. like, they've told us like, let's be present or let's, you know, let's focus because really it, it allows us to work all the time, which is a good thing and not a good thing. But, um, we all have to be mindful of it. You know, what's interesting is I remember, um, my dad who is no longer with us, but he, he was on his phone more than our girls. He was like always on the phone. And he was like doing, he was like checking in and like, you know, doing all these things everywhere we went. You know? I know he had the notification uh, active for all the social media things. and Yeah, and he loved it. And, yeah. you know, he was like, um, you know, almost 70 and he was using his iPhone 24-7. Right. But how do so, you think it relates to kids specifically? What would be? Well, what? what I'm saying is, is that, you know, they say this about a certain amount of people. And I think we all have become very accustomed to using technology all day long. So... You know, I just think that I want to be the other side of it where people are having not complaining about it all the time and seeing the benefits of it, actually. So I could really, um, you know, I can understand why people write those articles and I can I can understand, you know, why they feel the way they do or why that might be their experience. But we're going to share a little bit of a different side of it just so that you can have another perspective. So first off, we create our own reality right? We believe that to be true. And a lot of the things that people say about kids and teenagers and things like that, I just really, really disagree with because I think that if we appreciate technology and we understand, you know, how to use it and how to incorporate it into our lives and how to become mindful with it, it's it's going to add to our well-being rather than take away from our well-being. Right. So we're the ones who get to choose how technology impacts our lives and what we do with it. And it's a tool just like anything else. Yeah. And if you approach it with fear and limitation, then you're just going to amplify all kinds of problems. Anyway, um, you know, I was having a talk with Bella about this, our oldest, and she was telling me, you know, it's it's just like anything. There's left, there's right. Like think about Google. You can You can search for beautiful things and you can search for other things. And really, it's up to you what you focus on, what you look up, what you, you know, what right. you want to read about, what you want to see. So, you know, we have the ability to search for whatever we want and we decide what to do with it. So if we focus on the negative, we're going to get negative results. If we focus on the positive, we're going to get positive results. And this is not like 100 percent. Nothing's perfect. And sometimes, you know, we'll need to help each other, like, you know, remind each other, like, hey, let's take a break or let's play a game or let's interact in this other way you know, um, we just kind of work together. So at the end of the day for us, like our biggest dream was to establish meaningful connections with each other and our, and our girls. So that's like kind of like all the time. I don't think that our girls are addicted to anything. No, I think because we never really limited it aggressively. We don't do it with well, sugar. We, well, we we don't, don't do it with electronics. Well, we don't limit the time. We empower and educate them, but we, we are mindful of the content. They do not. Right. They do not like sit on YouTube for hours. They right. they do not even go on YouTube but they by even, themselves. They kind of self regulate themselves. Right, and they ask us for a lot of help. You know, they say like, "Hey, I'm thinking about like looking up this website. Do you want to check it out first? Like, we kind of like because they know we're all on the same team. We're doing it together. You know, and so I, I mean, they're not. We don't have fear around it, and you know, there's so many things you can do now. There's apps like Bark, and there's all these ways that you can you can monitor what they do. You can see where they're hanging out and what they're doing. But if you have good communication and you have trust, then you have great influence over your children anyway. So we are very mindful of the type of media that we consume and the apps and the games. And you know, even though they have the password to iTunes, they still ask us to approve the apps. Right. Um, so that we kind of know like what they're focusing on and what they're doing. And we all talk about it, though. It's like it's pretty open. Transparent. Yeah, it's very transparent. So, you know, in our house, it's just a different scenario. And, you know, we're not saying let them do whatever we want, whatever they want. Um, you know, we consider ourselves as parents to be their first uh, transformational coaches, you know, and guides and leaders. So we gently guide them with love. And, you know, we also this is a big one, actually. We also do not believe in using their favorite activities or, or these technologies or their, you know, their, their devices as negative consequences, like to teach them a lesson or anything like that. So we don't take away, we don't take away their phones. We don't punish them. We don't tell them to give us their devices. So, um, the, I would say their own emotions are really the only punishment that there is because we don't really do any of the enforcement of any kind. So if they lose their cool, it's, 
you know, the, their emotions is the only consequence they have, wouldn't you say? Yeah, we don't we don't punish them for showing emotions, and we don't right, we don't then, punish them for anything. But They've then never... they come back to you, and they they want a prana boost, or they want they they need to. Well, yeah, they want to reconnect, and they want to help want our help to make it through the emotions. But so we don't have consequences. So we don't be like, don't talk to us like that, or we're going to take away your phone. We don't have that type of relationship. Right. So I mean, that type of relationship is not really useful in the real world, too. You know, as as grown ups, we're taught to respect one another and work together. You know, and communicate. You know with each other that's how we treat our kids like you would you know um an adult relationship so we just believe in communicating with them and educating them rather than limiting and scaring them so <clears throat> from a very young age you know we uh, we used to like talk to them about mindfulness and what does that look like on you know on on your devices so we would let them know the effects of screens like on our muscles and on our eyes so we would do like body checks you know where we would check in and see how they were feeling and we would be like how you know they would play oh my god they could play minecraft for like seven hours straight i don't know how they do it because <laughs> i i you know i would need a break but i would ask them like how do you feel like get up let's do some junkie jumping jacks let's do hide and seek run around something like they know to take breaks they know to check in and see how their hands feel their fingers their thumbs um if anybody watched their kid play minecraft it's just it's unreal what they can create and how they let their imagination run and how much they learn from being on these devices. Like there's so many positive benefits to it as well. But again, let me just let me just say again, we are extremely mindful and so are they, um, what they do, how they consume content and how they consume games and apps and things like that. So Right. Being aware of your body, being, being mindful of, of the time and just, you know, just don't really trance out or go into a zombie mode because you just always have that awareness of your own body right and we don't you know we don't really believe in just simply saying no um without teaching them anything i think that's where the troubles begin because first of all they, they're watching us you know so like they're they're seeing what we do are we on our phone a lot are we consuming you know technology are we on you know our screens watching stuff binge watching shows things like that like what are we doing you know so like what are they learning um, how much time do we spend and what are we modeling for them? So I know people who say that they can sit for hours, you know, and, and watch something or, or be on their phones or be on their laptops or something like that. So are you are you guys taking breaks? You know, like something you always say when you're on electronics for too long, you always say, I'm fried. Like, I need a break. I have to stop. Like, whatever I'm doing, go outside, do whatever, but just take a break, right? right. So, I mean, so we all do that. But really, we all um, love our devices, right? But we also love taking breaks from them and being present. So anyway, keep in mind <laughs> that uh, anybody who is listening to this or anybody who reads my, you know, my articles, my, my blog or something like that, um, they can only do that on their device. Either they're doing that on their laptop or they're doing that on their mobile phone. Like we're always on our screens. And, and if they're listening to this, they're listening to a podcast on their device, right? right? So that's like ironic part, right? It's hard to explain in, you know, just one podcast how connections in our family work, but I can assure you that anybody who wants to be connected to their to their kids through like heart-based love and mindfulness, it never begins with fear or limitations. And our girls who are not limited, they make really beautiful choices. Um, you know, sometimes even when we're in the car, they just like look out the window or, you know, invent a game to play. Like they're just not on a screen. They just, they don't, they don't, they just don't feel threatened in any way. They could just use it when they want. So they, um, it's a different scenario when you do that. And, you know, so we had a, I had a talk with Bella and, and Gabby and I've asked them like how many things that they've learned, like what do they actually learn when they're on their devices? And, you know, Bella said she's learned reading, spelling, math, engineering, science, photo editing, physics, and, you know, I think we just have to realize that it's a different time now and we're, we're all learning how to integrate, you know, this technology into our homes and into our lives. And technology is not going anywhere. So it's here and it's a part of all of our lives. And I think if we can learn to embrace it and respect it and apply mindfulness to it, you know, we could focus on the gratitude of the technology and all that it adds to our lives. But we would have an easier time teaching our kids about it. But instead of uh, marching against war, we're marching for peace. We're not creating resistance, right? That's the core message here. Right. And, and so we understand there's a lot of dangers. There's a lot of people using technology in, you know, negative ways. There's a lot of problems with cyberbullying. Those are all real, real problems. They're real topics. But I think if we 
if we made this a better topic to talk about and we made it more exciting and a part of our family, like I said, embrace it, I think we would have such an easier time kind of teaching our kids what we do on online and offline. It's the same thing. Right. And instead of just simply focusing on all the negative sides, also simply mention some of the good good, good sides. Right. So that's what we're going to do now because when we focus on the negative and we make our... Um, children feel bad for what they're doing or bad for what they want to do. They feel shameful and they feel bad about themselves. And honestly, it creates them making bad decisions and bad choices. Yeah, how can it not? Right. So we're just going to go through a few things. I actually have, um, you know, five ways that technology actually brings our family closer. But um, after we sat down and we, we talked about it, we actually added a bunch of more, <laughs> bunch more ways. So there's even more, we have some bonus. There's even more than five ways that um, it brings our family closer together. So one would be texting each other. We literally like all text each other. We text funny, funny messages, loving messages. We text emojis. Sometimes the girls will text me or write something that they don't really want to talk about. They don't, it's just easier to write. It's easier. So it provides like a little bit of an intimate conversation. Um, you know, we all check in with each other, literally even from inside the house. Like, But instead of like yelling at everybody or yelling everyone's names, we text each other from yeah. like upstairs from And it downstairs. could be something as simple as, hey, dad, are you meditating? Or like what you know, can you come help me out? Really simple stuff instead of screaming or yelling. Yeah. Or you, you ask and you say good morning and you ask me if I want coffee. Like we, we use it. We just use it all the time. So, and it's not instead of talking, it's in addition to talking. We, we talk a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, all right. Number two, games. We like to play games together. There's a lot of like turn-based games that we, you know, play. Like I play um, Words with Friends with the girls. Um, or Scrabble, and sometimes draw something, though I'm not very good at draw something. So. I like puzzle games and like some strategy games, but I definitely playing a lot less games than I used to when I used to make games, but I still enjoy them once in a while. Yeah, and the girls love games, and they love showing us games and characters and how things work and what they learn, so I think games are awesome, and um, they, you can learn a lot from games. It's not just like, you know, what people say, like they're wasting time. They're They're like amazing. So uh, the third way is, you know, to set uh, reminders, like either reminders in Note or, or use our clock to set reminders. Um, for me, this really helps take things out of my head that I have to do. And it helps me to be present and aware, you know, with the kids so that I'm not thinking of everything I have to do. I kind of like set my clock to remind me to do them later. Um, you know, sometimes we actually, and I know that our girls do this too, but sometimes we even set, um, like daily affirmations, like beautiful, positive messages that'll pop up at like, you know, two, 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 I get a message like, you know, take a deep breath or, you know, you're beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> but, all, um, all as well. <clears throat> yeah. But I mean, that's, that's awesome. That's kind of a fun thing to do. Okay. So the fourth thing would be learning, you know, I mean, gosh, if, <laughs> they ask us so many questions. Everybody knows kids ask a million questions. Well, we all do. And we all can look stuff up immediately. I mean, we have immediate access to information with Google or asking Siri. And it's like, if we don't know something, we say, I don't know, let's ask Siri. Right. <laughs> like, let's look it up. And so we're constantly learning where people think you just learn in school or you learn at work or you learn when you're reading, but you, you can constantly learn like all day long. So that's another benefit, right? And that brings us closer together because then we can talk about it and have conversations about it. And um, okay, the fifth way is FaceTime. We love FaceTiming, using our phones sometimes when we're at the grocery store and we, you know, we want to see each other. You know, as long I just want to point connection. out, these are seem really, really obvious, but we're all we're trying to do is again, focus on the positive aspects of technology instead of pounding it and yelling at it. Um, that's what we're doing. We're just stating the obvious, beautiful things. Right. But, you know, I went to a three-day conference and I was able to like FaceTime the girls and, you know, call home and stuff like that. And it's just cool. I mean, when we were young, we were like dreaming of having the ability to do FaceTime. I mean, they're just growing up with it as like a natural thing, um, you know, that everybody does. And it's just like no big deal. But this was like the biggest dream come true was to be able to do this. So right. there's just, um, you know, I think sometimes we overlook how how blessed we are if we were even lucky to have these devices. You know, they're, they're a big investment. And they're getting smaller and faster. Smaller and faster. And yeah. So um, some of the other ways that we use technology um, to, you know, in our lives and to, you know, bring our families closer is we share a grocery list between the four of us. So it's really I love, cool. I love doing that because it updates in real time. As I'm at the grocery store picking things out, 
the kids will be updating in the list and I'll see it like expand. I think that's funny. Yeah, it's really cool because, you know, one of the things is, you know, with four people in the house, sometimes you don't know when you run out of something. And it was, I mean, it, it was crazy to just have like a little list with a pen and paper. Like now we have a shared list in our Apple Notes where all four of us can access it. And we kind of have a list of all the different stores and what we usually buy. And you can check it off as you go. But yeah, it's really cool. So I don't have to give you a list before you go if you go to the store. And if you guys are run out of something, when I go to the store, I can see that we need it. Um, so that's been really cool. That's amazingly useful. Yeah, I love that. I'm so glad we learned how to do that. Um, another way that we love, another reason we love technology is we love music. We all share Apple Music um, playlists and songs. And um, we use Pandora, too. So this has been amazing because we always have music on. I have to say Apple Music is tremendous with affirmations and meditation music. I love how much, how many options there are on Apple Music. Yeah. And all our favorite songs are on there. So and the good thing is, is that, you know, the girls can choose their favorite music. So everybody can really have a preference of what they like. And share playlists. Right. I love that. Because you are the best DJ ever. Tina knows every single song. And it's so cool. You make the coolest list. So then I can just. You know, steal the playlist. Thank you. Okay, so another thing we do is um, we, so far, at least the three of us, we share Instagram. And I can tell you my Instagram feed is very positive. It's very high vibration. I only follow that which I learn from, which adds to my well-being. So that really, like, that prana boosts me to go through my Instagram. And if I scroll through, I mean, I use it for, for work and I use it to stay connected Um, but also I use it to learn and empower myself and I love it because I see like a beautiful quote and I can share it with Bella, you know, and let her read it. So I'm not like telling her to read it. I'm just sharing it. And if she wants to read it, she can or something. But I think that's, you know, opened up a whole world for all of us to share information and share cool things. We always see like the coolest vegan restaurants or, you know, different meals. Um, and there's just really so many benefits to it. Right. Um, another way to use, you know, technology to bring our family closer is photos and videos, obviously. We also use our uh, devices for affirmations and meditation. And one of the hugest things, and I remember when the girls were even much younger, they loved knowing where we were going. So they loved going into maps Mm -hmm. um, on their iPhones and kind of like watching the route that we're driving and learning the streets and looking out the window and seeing where we're driving and kind of like learning how to use directions, you know, I mean. And find your friends is amazing too, because if you guys leave, I can always, Gabby always says, oh, look up where mom is. Is she on the way? How far is she? You know, so that's really cool too. Right. That's awesome. So anyway, I think that uh, there's just many, many benefits to it. And I think that all the other challenges that we face, are um, a natural part of life and we have to learn to work together and um, empower our kids what to do online and if we're gonna have a connection with them and build some trust we're gonna tell them the same thing about interacting with people in real life how they are how they treat people what they say you know we let them know that it really matters what you what you say and how you comment and who you follow and how, to, how does it make you feel when you're reading what people are posting and how does it make you feel if you're writing them back and what you're saying and I think in our family that's just the biggest focus one of our core values is mindfulness so that just extends to technology right and I think it's important too that we really learn how to, you know, protect and stay relevant and knowledgeable about what our kids are doing because they learn things so fast. They know they know things without even like trying to learn it. So I mean it's, it's like a, it's already integrated into their consciousness somehow. Yeah. So it's important for us to really like stay on top of it, you know. But if we can do that in a loving way, like, hey, what are you interested in? Who do you like to follow? Like who are, you know, what are you, what are you reading? What are you focusing on? What are you listening to? Like, you know, things like that. I think we're, we have to be a big part of it, but it doesn't have to come from fear. Right. It has to come from a place of love and caring. No, as soon as you bring, again, fear into it and control and limitation and, you know, all of these negative things, then those are the results that you'll begin to reflect back at yourself. So that's important to always keep in mind. Well, plus you know, that's when kids are not honest, when they know that they can't talk to you about things, they can't come to you and they can't trust you to support them. Instead, they're afraid of getting in trouble. Right. So that's, that's really important. That so spin, spin not a control real quick. Yeah. So anyway, um, we will leave you with a prana boost affirmation 
um, which is really good and relevant for this topic, which says, I choose to see this differently. I choose to see this with love. So try to think of that when you're thinking of technology or learning about technology or, you know, trying to understand your child's interest in electronics and, you know, having devices and what they're doing on it. Um, I invite you all to learn about emotional health, uh, which is just as important as physical health. And that has everything to do with what we're talking about, emotional health, emotional well-being, connecting with your family. So I have a free gift that you can all download at feelingyourwaythroughparenting.com forward slash gift. Here I introduce you to five ways to loving lovingly respond to emotions, which is like a quick reference to learning a new mindset to create peace, love, and happiness in your life. And we know your time is super valuable, so we thank you and appreciate you for listening to our podcast. And we invite you to join our Facebook group for Prana Boost, which is facebook.com slash groups slash Prana Boosting. And uh, you guys can ask questions. You guys can, you know, tell us some things that you're struggling with or any types of topics that you'd like us to talk about. Um, Send us your questions. Let us know. Let us know how you're feeling and let us know what you think about our previous podcast episodes. And I just wanted to announce today that I'm actually opening up some appointments for one-on-one coaching. If you would like to connect with me, you can DM me on Instagram at PranaBoost or email me at tina at pranaboost.com. And I would love to help you out. And that would be awesome. We just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you. And um, become a prana booster, raise your vibration, and change Change your life. Change your life. Bye. Bye. Until next time.